Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I know you're cute. I, 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 I understand you got other things to do this morning, but if his best blessing was contingent upon your praise, Come on. Come on. if you need him to do anything, if you don't need nothing, go ahead and sit down and fold your hands up. That's, that's, but if you need God to do anything for you yes. today, if you are at the end of your road, if you are at the edge of your breakthrough, yes. praise you the Lord. Sins. 
And dost thou now teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that he had got cast out. And when he found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. <laughs> and he worshipped him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you see me now? Can you see me now? I know I've been sitting in the service with you for about an hour now, but can you see me now? Can you, can you see me? I know you know what I look like, but can you see me? Can you see me the way God sees me? What are you looking at? Can you see me now? There are several ways to define blindness. Most regard blindness as the inability to see at all. But at the very least, blindness is the inability to discern or separate light from darkness. In this world, we, we rely heavily on our sight to receive visual symbols, signs, and clues. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody? If you close your eyes and you say something to them, you don't know if they're giving you a disapproving look. You know, the, mm, did she just say what I think she said? You don't know. You need your sight to be able Amen. to see if they agree or if they disapprove Amen. of what you just said. It is difficult for a blind person to find a job. Statistically, they say 65 to 70 percent of blind people are either unemployed or underemployed. Whole thing. People think blind people are incapable, that they're powerless, that they're inadequate, and that they're inefficient. Blind people are at the wheel of everybody. Well, what causes blindness? The lens can be clouded. Something can obscure your vision, preventing light from entering into your eye. Preventing light from getting inside of you. Something outside of you, keeping light from getting inside of you. Something distracting you. Something that's diverted your attention. Something that's entertaining you. Something that's preventing light from getting inside of you. Deformity, a misshapen eye, can prevent you from seeing light properly. Now, you're getting light, but you don't see it properly. This deformity makes right appear wrong. Mm, say it. Now, I'm not talking to you about right from wrong. I'm not saying that you're not seeing right from wrong. Everybody comes into the world with a form of what's right and what's wrong. I'm saying you have an inability to be able to see right, right. There's a difference between not being able to see right from wrong, but not seeing right properly. You're blind. You're... The retina can be deteriorated, and it can affect how you perceive the images you're receiving. Your perception of right can be deteriorated. Okay, let me explain what that means. That you had right, you had it, but life makes right more difficult mm -hmm. to see and receive. If you get hurt enough, if you get in enough trouble, if you have enough hardships, if you have enough heartbreak, if enough people do you wrong, right becomes less important. It becomes, it deteriorates. That means you started out running well. You started out doing good. 
but you was not giving back what you were giving out. So now vengeance sounds like a better option. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Enough people hurt my feelings. I guess I'm going to start hurting other people's feelings too. Because you had right, and right wasn't received well. And so what you had that was good is now bad. But it didn't happen overnight. It came gradually. Can you imagine being without the internal ability to perceive externally correctly? Jesus knows blind people when he sees them. Jesus just finished feeding 4,000 blind people with seven loaves of bread. 4,000 people. They weren't members. They followed him. And after he fed them, they left. They heard him. And after he fed them, they left. They sat down and they ate what he had to give. And when he was done, they left. Blind people. 4,000 blind people that heard the word of God and walked away. He had 4,000 people in his attendance. He didn't start a church. He didn't start a blog page. He didn't friend them on Facebook. He had 4,000 people's complete attention. But he was not trying to keep them. In fact, he fed them, prayed for them, broke bread for them, and then let them go. He didn't send little reminder cards out. Hey, uh, come on back to the church. He didn't do that. Stop worrying about who left you. Feed the ones that remain. Amen. Amen. Stop worrying about how many are against you or how many are for you. Let them come do what you got to do and go. Let them come and go. You don't want all of them there anyway. Jesus had the blind Pharisees running after him, talking about show us a sign. If you really be of God, because we know, we, we know Moses. We know all Moses' laws. If you really be of God, show us a sign. That's what blind people want. They want you to show them something. Mm. To show us the authenticity of your power. If you're really who you say you are, show me. When you should be able to get revelation clearly on, like that. As to who a person really is. You shouldn't need no signs. You shouldn't need them. If they be of God, you already see who they are. Amen. Yeah. Sinners want signs and wonders. They want you to pat a cake and they want you to perform and they yeah. want you to dance yeah. for them yeah. and they want you to do all of these elaborate things to show us who you really are. Amen. Jesus said, this, this, this right here, this generation ain't going to get no sign. Amen. They were blind. And Jesus was saying, if you can't see me now, then you will never see me. If you don't know me by now, then you will never, 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 never know me. <laughs> you will never know me. What made the Pharisees blind was the fact that they didn't believe they needed a Savior. What makes you blind is your inability to see that you are blind. You don't know you can't see Jesus. You don't know that. You figure as long as the Pharisees did, as long as I got God, I'm good. But you can't even get to God without Jesus. Amen. That means you're blind. If you think all you need, well, God, he, he the only one that could judge me. God is the only one. God is it. God is it. I don't need Jesus. If you can't see that you need Jesus, then you're not getting to God. I know you're talking to him. I know, you, you know you're praying and all of this. But if you're not going in the name of Jesus, you're blind. If you don't need the way, the truth, the life, you ain't getting to God. Go ahead and try it. Go ahead and jump and see if you get across the street. You're going to get your crazy frog tail hit. <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Well, how do you correct blindness? The blind man in Mark 8, the blind man came to Jesus from Bethsaida, and the blind man besought Jesus. The blind man came to Jesus. 
Okay, so the first thing you need to know is you are blind. So you, if you are capable, need to come to Jesus. You need to come to Jesus. Can you imagine a blind man coming to Jesus saying, I need your help? A blind man. It's obvious he was not always blind. Well, how can you say he was not always blind? He knew the difference between a man and a tree. He knew the difference between a man and a tree. He was seeing right improperly. He was seeing right partially. He was something good, something bad. He was double-minded. And so he was coming to God saying, look, I'm, I'm seeing poorly. Jesus took him by the hand and led him out of town. So not only the man was blind, but the man obviously got blind where he was. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Where stop thinking God is gonna bless me in my mess. Mm -hmm. No, uh-uh. Stop thinking God is gonna leave me right where I am, right in the sin I'm in, right in the state I'm in, right in the condition I'm in, because I like this. This is nice, this is comfortable, this is familiar. Keep it right here, Lord, and just go ahead and, and spit in my eye. Go ahead and heal me right here where I am. I'll give you my eye, but not my issue. Oh, I, I, I'll give you my eye. I'm cool. I want to be able to see what I've been missing. Come on. See who I've been dancing with. Come see on. who I've been living with. Come see on. what I've been doing. Don't take me out. Leave me in here. Come but go ahead and spit in my eye. That's cool. Mm. That's cool. Jesus took him by the hand and took him out of the town. Jesus had to lead him out of town had to take him out like a little child. <laughs> and Jesus is, is telling this man, he's he telling a grown man, don't go do this anymore. But it sounds like he's reprimanding the child. He's telling him, stop being tossed to and fro. Stop doing this. Stop going back and forth between different doctrines. Stop doing it. Stop going between right and wrong and mixing them two together. And now you want to live in this world. He had to lead this man out like a little kid and tell him, don't, don't do this no more. No, no, no. Stop it. Quit it. Go home. Do right. You, you've heard this before when he talked to the woman and he said, go and sin no more. You shouldn't have to tell grown folk not to sin no more, right? Right? You shouldn't have to say, don't do that. You blind. Every time you do it, you come back blind. Why you keep going? Why you keep going there? You think he gonna change because now you can see? No. You can see. He blind. Took him out of his mess. Then he took some clay. He spit on the ground and put it on his eye. He spit on, he spit in the clay and, and put the clay on, on the man's eye. And Jesus said, what do you see? And the man said, well, I see men as trees walking. He didn't say nothing else. Why would you settle for half deliverance? Why would you settle for almost there? Who does that? When, when the FDA says you shouldn't eat raw meat, half cooked meat, we won't put nothing half done inside of our natural bodies. But we all right with seeing a little wrong and a little right. Because there's a responsibility that comes with seeing things clearly. Because he that knows to do good and don't do it is sin. But if you can straddle the fence a little bit, just let me see. I'm good. This is cool. I can live with this. It's a man, but you see it as a tree. It's flesh and blood, but you see it as something insignificant. You all right with that? So when he identified himself as not being able to see completely, Jesus touched him again. You've got to be able to say, God, I ain't sure if I want to live this holy life, but go ahead and touch me again. I'm not sure if I want to live completely right, but Go ahead and touch me again. I trust you, though. I trust you. I don't know what holiness looks like. I don't know what sin-free is me, but go ahead and touch me again. Go ahead and 
and touch me again. Jesus said, look up. Look up. Your salvation draws nigh, coming down from the Father of life. It don't come from the house. It don't come from your husband. It don't come from your brother. It don't come from your kids, your blood. Look up. Look up and see. Look up and see the salvation of God. He said, look up after he's touched him again. And he said, I see me. I see right is right. I no longer see right from wrong. I see right is right. I see men, not men and trees. I see just men now, Lord. I see clearly. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Go on home. Go on home. Don't go back to the town. And don't tell nobody in the town. Okay, some of y'all, y'all looking at me completely confused. Stop taking your tail back where you were when he found you. I don't, you ain't got no ministry in your club. You don't. You don't. You, there's no ministry in the club. There ain't no ministry. I know people have said that. Well, I got to go and call them out. No, you ain't all the way out yourself. Yes. How you going to go call somebody else out and you halfway in? You kind of in. No. Amen. Jesus said, don't go back in the town. Don't call Pookie and them. Uh -huh. Don't go over and try your salvation to see if it worked. Come on. Come on. Don't go over there and tell them, you know what, I'm saved now, so go ahead and tease me because I'm, I'm all right. I can resist the devil. He will flee from me. I got enough word in me now that I ain't going to slip in the sin. Go ahead, try it. Give me your best shot, devil. He said, stay no tail out of here. He said, after you have been converted, Converted, then you can go strengthen your brother. Yeah. But until you got it all together, yeah. if you can see, he, God touched you, saved you, set you apart. He's still blind. They still wrong. They still in their mess. Yes. If it took a touch from Jesus to deliver you, what makes you think your little raggedy touch is going to set them free? Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Unless you want to be blind again, don't go back in there. 
God wants me to tell you, stop trying to get him to bless you where you are. <clears throat> Even if you don't have it all wrong, don't you understand if you don't have it all wrong, that means you don't have it all right. And you're blind. Tell your neighbor, can you see me now? Can you see me now? Can you feel me? Can you feel me now? Can, can you see me now? Well, Lord, what is the difference then between the man that came to you and he was blind and the man that was born blind, never been able to see light from darkness? All he's ever known was darkness. Never been able, didn't even know light existed. How can you describe light to a blind man? What do you say? It's sunny. What is sunny? Mm -hmm. How do you describe light to somebody who has never seen it? And that's all they know. All they know is wrong. Why are you trying to explain Jesus to someone who does not have the light to receive it? It can only be given to you through the spirit, that internal element that causes you to receive light. Without that component, everything around you is dark. Your thoughts are dark. You, there ain't nothing more irritating than talking to somebody who's always negative. Always something negative, nothing positive. Everything is bad. Everybody broke. Everybody sad. Everybody sick. Girl, everybody in your house is sick. Y'all ain't got no insurance. You can't go get no Medicaid. You can't get by aspirin. Everybody in your house sick. Nobody feel good. Everything around you is broke, busted, and disgusted. And you sitting in it? Are you all right with that? When you are born blind and all you know is darkness, then everything you talk about is dark. Everything you gravitate towards is dark. Everything. Jesus couldn't take this one by the hand and say, trust me, I'm going to take you somewhere better. No, I don't even know who you are. I'm good on this corner begging. This is what I do best. I'm good hooking and hoeing and I'm better at this. I'm good at lying and cheating and stealing and abusing. I, I'm better at this. I don't know none of that other stuff you talking about. I'm better at being this way than I, I can't do that way. I can't understand how that'll work for me. But this right here works. And so Jesus couldn't coddle this one. He couldn't carry this one out. No, he said, okay, okay, uh, they said, Jesus, you know, this man right here, he was born blind. Whose problem is that? Whose problem is that, Lord? This person is saying he was born this way. Wow. So, so Jesus is saying, no, he didn't do nothing wrong. His parents didn't do nothing wrong. This thing right here, this problem right here is God's way of getting glory. You not being able to see ever, right, right, is God's way of getting glory. Here standing in front of this man, these three elements were standing in front of this blind man. The, the word, the church, and the world were all standing in front of this blind man having a conversation. And you don't hear this blind man open up his mouth and say a word. The word being Jesus Christ, the church looking at his situation as sin, because that's what church does, right? Church tells you when you have sinned. So they saw the situation as sin. Certainly there's a sin. If you stopped here, Jesus, if, if the word stopped right here, and there's a person right now that we're focusing on, then there's some sin around here, right, Lord? And the world was there. The world, you have to understand the world is not your friend. Amen. You have to understand the world is not going to speak well of you. you got to understand that the world sees your situation as a way to profit. Yes. Yes. As a way to get something. As a way for you to 
be able to contribute to their mess. Jesus came that you might have life and that more abundantly. I'm going to take care of this. This sickness, this disease that you got, this infirmity that you have, this, this thing that you've been wrestling with, that's a demon. And Jesus says, I'm going to take care of it because it is subject to me. I came to do a job and I'm not going to leave until the job is yes. done. I am not going to leave yes. until what I was sent for to accomplish. What are you talking about, Terry B? Isaiah 55 and 11. He that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Jesus came as the word with a work, with a job to do. He was on assignment, and he could not return until his job was done. Amen. You have to be able to admit that the state you're in is wrong. Yes. Maybe if Jesus has stopped by today to tell you something, Maybe it's because something about you is wrong. Maybe it's not a sin. Maybe it's just the weight that's besetting you. Maybe it's just a problem you can't shake on your own. Maybe it's a situation you can't get out of by yourself. Maybe it's a circumstance that you didn't bring on yourself. It's just a situation that God allowed to happen to you so that he can get the glory. Right now, Jesus said, I'm going to leave you right here because I need your enemies to see what I'm getting ready to do to you. I need, see, I'm preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And I need you to stay right here where you are. Don't, don't, don't move a muscle. Don't move a muscle. So Jesus said, you stay right here where you are. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to spit. And then I'm going to take some clay. And then I'm gonna put it over your eyes real quick. Let me insert this too. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me try to let me, let me try to break this down for you. Jesus is the potter and we're the clay. He, he says, He says in Isaiah 64, 8, but now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art thou art the potter, and we are the work of thy hand. Jesus took this clay and put it over the man's eyes. He took clay, a new man, and put it over the old man's eyes. He took, they were slow this morning, it's good. He, they, he took a new man, he formed out of the dust of the ground, a new man, and took that new man and put it over the old man's eyes. Over the old man. Put it up. You are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are coming up. He took a new man and put it over the old man's eyes. But he spit though. That's nasty. Who does that? Spit. He had to spit. He could have got, got some water from somebody. Spit. Why did he spit? You know what it is. In some Eastern culture, Eastern cultures, Jerusalem being the capital of Israel, Eastern cultures, it is believed that spitting in public is bad luck. Why? Oh, this is going to bust you all in the head. Why? Is it bad luck to spit in public? Because it's a sign of contempt and loathing. So, Lord, were you in contempt of the man's condition? You despise the fact that he was blind? Even though it wasn't his fault, even though your father put it on it so that you could get the glory out of him? You're telling me you spit on him because you were angry about the fact that he was blind? No. In some Eastern cultures, it's bad luck to spit because you can spit on a spirit. You will be spitting on a spirit you didn't even know you were spitting on. An evil spirit. He was showing contempt for that spirit that held that man blind for all them years. He spit, showing his contempt for the spirit that was preventing that man from sin. Because if you spit on the spirit, that spirit will curse you. OK, 
Hey, that's okay. That's room to praise right there. That's room to praise right there. If you spit on an evil spirit, that spirit will curse you. Okay. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. It is written, cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree. Jesus spit on the spirit that was causing the man not to be able to see. He took on the curse that was reserved for that man's life. You think Jesus just saved you from lying and cheating and abusing? No, that was a curse on your life. He got up on the cross and died with carrying your curses. Jesus got up on the cross carrying your lying, reckless, wild, chaotic tail with him. There was a curse. He was cursed, carrying your curse on the cross. Bruised for your iniquity. Wounded for your transgressions. Chastised because you couldn't hold on to your own peace. He carried your curse on the cross. I know you think you know more than Jesus. I know you think you can pull your own self out of your situation. But Jesus already handled it. So if you still got the situation, he took it all for you. He spit on that man's blindness. He spit on it. Spit on that devil that was holding him. Spit on that devil that was binding him. Spit on that devil that had him. Spit on that devil that had his house. Spit on that devil that had his marriage. He spit on that devil that had his healing. Spit on that devil that had his finances. Spit on that devil. He spit on him. He was trying to curse that man, but instead he cursed Jesus. Because Jesus didn't know no sin. Didn't know no sin. That spirit was trying to prevent that man from seeing right. Not right from wrong, but that right is right. Luke 7, 21 says, and in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and the evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. And then Jesus said, Go, wash. Go. You got to remember, Jesus was sent as a word to do a work. Jesus took that same man and said, now you go. Can't see it yet. Jesus sent that man out. He sent him out, not only as a man looking for help, not only as a man looking for healing, but he sent that man out as an apostle, because that's what apostle means, to be sent. He said, you go. I can't go. I can't go with you. I still got work to do here. You go. Can you imagine the chaos, the conflict that man had to be feeling? Walking. I, I, you know, I don't understand this. I'm blind. Why would he send me out here? I'm blind. And then that new man on his face going, but he'll be a light to your feet and a lamp to your back. Don't worry about it. Go. Go. But I'm blind. Why would Jesus send me out here? I don't even know which direction I'm supposed to be going in. But that new man is saying, but he will walk with you through the shadow of death. And you don't have to fear no evil. But, but the blind man going, I can't see. Why would he send me? I don't even know where I'm going. And he's saying, he, he has ordered your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And they're delighting in his way. When that blind man found his way to the pool, something in him had to go, hmm. I actually made it. Not being able to see where I was going, I'm here. He couldn't help but jump in that water. He couldn't help if God did it and I made it all the way here by myself. None of my friends, none of my parents, none of my road dogs, none of my hoods, none of my, none of them came with me. I was out here by myself. And he got in that water. Mm-mm-mm. My God. Shuck himself and walk back into town. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what you say now? What you say about Jesus? He was able to walk back into town, completely able to see. Is that the blind man? Is that the one that was begging? Is that the one that didn't have nothing? Is that the one whose husband left? Is that the one who tried to kill himself? Is that the one that robbed that bank and went to jail? Is 
that the one? Didn't even recognize him. He said, yeah, it's me. It's me. Call him into the church. Let's take him to the church. The church did. The church, take him to the church. The church will tell us if he for real healed or not. The church will tell us if he for real delivered or not. The church will tell us. The church will do it. Talk him to the church. The Pharisee said, who healed you? Jesus did. Jesus didn't heal you. Jesus was a sinner. Jesus didn't do it. And you couldn't really be saved if you got saved outside the church. Baby, go ahead and start the car because they're coming after you. <laughs> you couldn't really, you really couldn't be saved if you got saved outside the church. Jesus is outside the church. The Jesus we try to crucify is outside the church. No, you didn't get God to give God the glory. Um, bless the Lord, all our souls. <laughs> it was God give God the glory don't give this sinner Jesus no glory don't give Jesus no praise he coming he, he's outside of the fold he's outside of the religious elite he ain't a part of us don't give Jesus no glory the man said look I don't know I don't know if Jesus ain't paying his tithes or not I don't know if Jesus is missing services I don't know but all I know is I once was blind. I don't know. I don't know how often he comes to fellowship. I don't know. But all I know is now I can see. And it was Jesus who did it. Y'all been doing this, this, this religious, traditional church thing for years. And y'all ain't never been able to get nobody back they sight. But this dude right here. He the real deal. Yeah. Jesus did. And the Pharisee said, oh, this brother crazy. He crazy. He in my house and going to tell me we got to bring Jesus into the church? We ain't bringing no Jesus in here. Jesus is not one of us. He ain't like us. He didn't come up the way of Moses. He's saying he God. We already got a God. We already got a God. That God position is filled. We don't need Jesus. The man said, well, then, you know, I think you're having a problem with what I'm saying because uh, you might get converted. You might end up being his disciple. You're struggling with what I'm saying because you blind and you might need Jesus. He looked at that brother and told him, get the stepping. Go on out of here. Ain't nobody trying to hear that foolishness. Turn in your praise and worship outfit. Turn, turn in your keyboard. Put your, put your drum sticks away because we don't want you in our church no more. You ain't going to come in here and tell them the leadership thing wrong. Wow. You ain't going to come in the house of God and tell the pulpit <laughs> that they wrong. You ain't going to do that. You ain't going to do that. You ain't going to chastise us. You ain't going to tell us you was born in sin. The fact that they told that man you was born in sin was them saying we what? Mm. You blind. Mm. That's what Jesus was trying to say. The fact that you think that you're sinless is evidence you're blind. If you're sitting out there thinking you are sinless, no, better yet, if you're sitting out there thinking, I ain't doing that sin, mm, come on now. Come on. I didn't sin that way, I'm not a robber, I'm not a thief, I'm not a, I don't beat my wife, I don't cheat on my husband, I don't cheat on my taxes, I don't steal pens from work. <laughs> <laughs> so I ain't committed no sin. Had it 
all together. He, he could see, sis, and nobody celebrated. Nobody patted him on the back. Nobody said, good job. Nobody said, not one time did you hear anybody in there say, man, how does it feel to be saved? How does it feel to be delivered? How does it feel to be cancer free? How does it feel to not have to be afraid anymore? How does it feel? How does it feel to know that you ain't got to worry? That you can cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Nobody said that to this blind man. Nobody said anything to him but how did you get saved? When did you get saved? Who saved you? How long have you been saved? How do you know you really saved? How come Jesus knew this brother was going to get his feelings hurt? Jesus knew this brother was going to get teased. Knew he was going to be called out. Knew he was going to get clowned. And didn't stop him from going back into town. Because that man was a disciple. That man was an apostle. That man, when he, when Jesus stops long enough. When Jesus stops all of heaven and earth. In his hands, all of it up underneath his auspices, care, custody, and control. And he stops long enough to touch you. Yes. It's because he's got work for you to do. When he stops long enough to heal you, it ain't so you can go get sick again. When he stops long enough to deliver you, when he snatches you out of hell, it's not so that you can just sit and look at me. He has discipled you. He's sending you somewhere. And he's telling you, go. If his salvation, if his deliverance is not controversial, if you're saying you're saved, but there's no conflict, if you're saying you're saved, you're healed, you got it all, you got all you need, and you ain't causing no drama with your salvation, if your presence doesn't incite a riot, if you walk in the room and people still cussing, still tripping, still clowning, you blind. <laughs> I know you saw me when I was baby. I know you saw me when I was hoeing around. I know you saw that. You ain't had no problem seeing that. But can you see me now? There's a song that goes, uh, I know who you're looking for, but she don't live here anymore. I know I look like that person, but that ain't me no more. And I'm going to tell you how it ain't me. I'm fixing to get real controversial. You need to stop being you. You need to get right. It ain't no longer about holiness or sin. It's about holiness or hate. There ain't no, there's no in between. There's no in between. Take your options out. You need to get, you need to be controversial. You need to tell, yeah, you need to tell all your boys, uh, look, Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Get your house in order. Yes. Pastor, you need to tell other pastors, put Jesus back in the building. Come on, come on. You need to tell other pastors, your house ain't right. Mm -hmm. Get your house in order. Daddy, you need to tell your kids, get your life right. Mm -hmm. You don't understand there's a repercussion to accept sin. Yes. He can see. And they still call him a blind man. There's an identity crisis in the earth. Yes. When Christians still look like sinners and blind still look like seeing folks. Are they seeing you properly? He answered though as if he were a blind man. That's okay. Because the works that I do, the Bible says that all men will see my good works. And then 
they'll be glorifying my God who's in heaven. Let them keep thinking that what they see is the same. When what comes out of you is different, then they won't misidentify you. When what comes out of your mouth is living waters instead of the dead, dry famine that used to come out of your mouth, when what comes out of your mouth is light and no longer darkness, then they will draw to God. Then they will see God. Who is this Jesus that you're talking about? What must I do to be saved? Crucify Christ because he was doing a building fund and feeding the homeless. And they didn't crucify Christ because he was a comfortable savior. No, they didn't go after him with a wooden cross. You don't put nice people on crosses. Who does that? You crucify convicts and people who rob and steal and murder. He took all of your robbing, stealing, murdering ways with him up on this throne. Yeah. He was a murderer when they crucified him. He was a liar, a cheater, a thief. When they crucified him, he took all of your nasty ways yeah. and put it up on the throne. Yeah. They crucified Jesus yeah. because he looked like you. They crucified my Savior because he looked just like me. The Bible says that whosoever should call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As I close, I want you to think about what stage of blindness you're in. Not whether or not you are blind. Because you're blind. Well, I'm not blind, Terry. You don't know me like that. I ain't blind. You don't know me, brother. You here. You blind. And in Romans 10 and 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved.